These are going to be a bit more tricky because we have to rely a lot more on the contrast because they're they're not like a dark. They they don't have terribly dark brown skin. That's enough for that first mushroom. With the wash, I'm simply defining the areas where it is the brown cut of the mushroom mainly. So it looks pretty strange at this point in time, but don't worry. And there's, I've got a nice picture here of the, the gills inside. So I might do a bigger version just in to use up this part, this corner part of my sketchbook because I love, oh, uh, I'm a food illustrator. I like drawing the gills of mushrooms, <laughs> whether it's in um, dip pen or Photoshop. It's actually, um, the gills are quite dark in this version. So I'm, I'm going to mix up a much darker brown. It's kind of a gray, gray brown. So this one is facing straight on. And I'm just, going to use the tiniest bit of very washed down grey brown just to um, try and define the outline somewhat. That's even just a little bit too defined for me. I'm going to add more water to my brush and just bring it round like that. Oh, we've got space here. <laughs> no, I'm going to work something out. I'm going to uh, dry it out now. For the mushrooms, I'm going to be using the Curateke with the Saji nib because it gives very fine lines, uh, not so much thick lines and I do want fine lines especially when I'm doing the gills. When you're faced with a item like this mushroom where it is difficult to gauge a contrast, just squint slightly at the reference and then your eye will be able to work out the areas of dark and light much better so that you can define them in your sketch. Here I've just added stem details just to give more interest to that stem. Again, when we started with this mushroom that I'm adding line detail to, it looked pretty formless, but just by adding that line to the bottom half of the cup and then including the stem, it's given us enough information and it reads very nicely as a little cute button mushroom. This is a sliced mushroom, so there's gill details, there's a cross section of the gills and it's a little bit tricky but again look at your reference and try to add as much detail as you are able. This one also is a sliced mushroom and it was a little bit unbalanced so that's why I added that line just there on the right. The stem is now coming in again the cross section with the gill detail and that intricate little sort of tear shape there. This is the larger mushroom where we're looking straight down on it so that you can see the gill details and this is the bit that I was looking forward to the most. The frilly parts that are outlining the cup are also included because that's very characteristic of this particular mushroom. Again, I mentioned that I was using this Saji nib because it gives incredibly fine line and you don't have to press too hard. It's just really beautiful. There are areas where the gills aren't always uniform, but um, that's something I wanted to include as well. So I just carried on like this all the way around. Oh, it makes such a lovely pattern. When I looked at my reference again, I realized that you could just see a tiny part of the stem just to make it a bit more dimensional. I included that line. Moving on to the other mushroom where you could just see a corner of the gill. I had to define the edge of that stem because of the way that it was angled upwards. So do look at your reference. You'll have different reference to me. You don't necessarily have to do mushrooms, of course, but the information that you need to separate out the areas of light and dark 
that will help the viewer understand what you've drawn will be on that reference. So I decided to add a heavier line on the underneath just to show that that part was in shadow. I wasn't liking the stem, it just needed a tiny bit more definition so I included this area where the ink gets pretty dark and also the part where the stem was cut and I just finished off this little mushroom in the top corner here. This is almost like a study of mushrooms. What we have here is the cup and the stem and the gills and you don't even have to do mushrooms obviously. You can apply the principles that you've learnt here of using areas of light and dark defining it with line to do it on any subject matter from landscapes to still lives. Hello, I'm Omar and I'm an illustrator and surface designer and in this class I'm going to be introducing you to the dip pen. We're going to be using it with ink and combine it with watercolour to create some really pleasing results. I've been using a dip pen since my student days, quite a long time ago, but I recently rediscovered this medium and I've been really enjoying combining it with watercolour in my sketchbook. What I really love about it is the quality of line it gives from really quite fine hairlines to something that's really bold and elaborate. I've been achieving such great results, creating really fresh, free, loose watercolours. We're going to start off with a rough guide to head and nibs and inks. Then we're going to apply the watercolour in a really loose way before we use the dip pen. I think this class will be a great introduction to pen and ink or if you just want to try a little something different for your own sketchbook practice. Please join me for this class. There's going to be some really fun projects.